Right, so moving on, um, please guys join me to welcome John Kinsley Amechi to the stage as he's give, he gives his talk on Vue.js under the hood, exploring the virtual DOM techniques and reactivity system. Please let's clap till he climbs the stage, please. Thank you, thank you. Right. Um, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know it's been a long day, but trust me, it's going to be an amazing talk. And um, I know you might be wondering, why is it Vue.js? I mean, since yesterday, we've been doing a lot of React, React, everywhere, React, React. And it now looks like, you know, it's only React that we have. But I mean, you know, there's something else that is, that is making waves. And I feel a lot of us know about this, but I think the only issue most of us have is we don't really have. <laughs> no, this is not skill issue here. I mean, skill issue is involved, but we know a lot of us <laughs> don't really know the right community that you know powers this amazing application or this framework. And that's why I'm here today. So my talk is Vue.js under the hood, and we're going to be exploring the virtual DOM techniques and the reactivity system in Vue.js. Now, when we say virtual DOM, a lot of us might know what it means, and a lot of us might not know what it means, but just look at it as, you see that web interface you see when you visit an application, the whole of those buttons, the whole of those drop downs, all those things are the DOM, you know? And when we mean virtual DOM, what do we actually mean? It's just like an actual representation, like a clone of the DOM elements in memory. It's like a lightweight copy of the real DOM. And um, I'm going to be walking you through how Vue implements the virtual DOM. And the first of it is the template compilation. Now, in Vue.js, we have what we call components. And um, this diagram you see here is just a graphical representation of how the DOM is being you know, cloned. Now, for every green dot, we have you know, in this representation, it basically represents changes that are made within the DOM. And it's basically me making you understand that in a virtual DOM, there is no maximum number of, you know, virtual DOMs that you can have because at every new view instance, that instance has its own DOM, which clones the original DOM or the actual DOM as some of us might know it as. So the templates are compiled into render functions and generates virtual DOM. That's the reason why you could have several virtual DOMs. Now, the second is the reactivity system. The Vue.js uses a reactivity system to track dependencies between data and the DOM and knows which part of the DOM you know, to update. Now, this is like a life cycle of how the updates in Vue.js is done. It starts from the template. It's compiled into a render function, like I said, in template compilation and triggers a re-render if there is a change and also tracks the dependencies. Now, that process is what bets a virtual DOM or a virtual tree, and that virtual DOM now updates the actual DOM. Now, you might be wondering, why not just take that you know, change directly into the actual DOM? Why are we having a virtual DOM in place? But you might see that, okay, I really did not see any changes that happened behind the scene, you know, I did not get my application is fast. Most of this is happening in milliseconds. But trust me, if you were to take your changes from whatever data that was made directly into the actual DOM, you would have a lot of inefficiencies in your application when you have that direct communication. And that's what the VDOM or the virtual DOM helps you to, what to do. Now, we have the different algorithm. This is basically just an algorithm that helps to minimize the DOM manipulation. You know, it helps you compare the VDOM with the previous version to know how many operations needs to update the real DOM. Now, we have the component-based updates. A lot of us that write React, Vue, Angular, we've had the word components, components, but we really don't know what 
component does or how it works. For every component in a view application, that component has its own DOM. So with the help of the components, you are able to what, apply the VDOM strategy on each component. And also each component manages its own virtual DOM. And this is just like a representation of you know, making you understand that whatever goes on in component A does not affect the actual DOM. It only affects the virtual DOM that is created for component A, if you understand what I'm saying. Now, we're going to be looking at the key updates. Now, this is basically just um, for people who render array of arrays of objects, arrays of arrays, nested arrays, and all of that. This is also another process of how the virtual DOM is being updated now. And basically, it's just you know rendering of arrays using key update, basically passing a default and a um, unique identifier for each value in your array or your list, if we say. We also have the async rendering, which is a process that performs asynchronous rendering, batching updates to the virtual DOM. And we're going to be looking at batching updates moving forward. But before then, let's talk about reactivity in general in Vue.js. What makes Vue.js reactive? How do we mean reactivity when we talk about Vue.js? Now, the process of Vue's ability to automatically update the DOM when data changes. It's known as the reactivity process. Vue achieves this reactivity through its own system. We have the getters, we have the setters. For those of us who build applications with Vue, you've, you would have seen stuff like V model, two-way data binding, one-way data binding. All of these processes are several ways of how Vue you know, reacts to data and all of that. And I just talked about two-way data binding and one-way data binding. I'm going to give you a very brief example of the both of them. Now, when you click on a button and an event is fired, for some reason, that event might make an API call, right? It might do anything. It might change the state of something. That communication, that process, it's a one-way. Now, when we talk about two-way, it's more like when you have a form, like an input, that is tied to a data, like a V model. So in your data, you have a V model of, let's say, name. And you have an input that allows you to enter the name. At every point you type into that input, an update is made, which is that reactivity we're talking about. So it updates in two-way data binding because as it changes the data, that same data is rendered back to the DOM. So at every point you add a character into the input, immediately you are seeing that character on the DOM. And at every point you remove or delete or change, you also see that same update too in the DOM. Now, this is also like a representation of how reactivity works in Vue.js. We have the directives, which updates the DOM, and we have a watcher, which communicates with the directive by having the directive notify the watcher, and also have a getter and a setter. So before I move on, let me just touch a little about getter and setter. If you have taken time to build applications in JavaScript, I'm not talking about framework this time around, like normal vanilla JavaScript, you definitely would have come across getters and setters. And as the name implies, it just does what the name implies. Getters is used to retrieve, fetch. Setters is used to update. Now, that process is also like the reactivity. And Vue also has that same process. So we can say it took it from you know, the behavior of JavaScript. Now, view instance and data reactivity. When a view instance is created, the data option is used to define the reactive data properties. Like I said, we have message, which is a variable, and we have something there, which is hello view. Now, at every point, hello view changes to, let's say, hello sales, hello Toby, hello Kingsley, whoever it is. That is a reactive process because when you call that variable at any point in your DOM, you get the most updated version of that particular variable or data. I already explained the getter setter, so I'm not going to you know, spend too much time on this. It's basically Vue.js leveraging on JavaScript getters and setters to achieve that reactivity. And let's talk about reactivity in component level. Like I said earlier, Vue.js has what we call components. And each component has its own DOM, its own virtual DOM. And components are actually the building blocks of Vue application. And you know why? It's because 
just as React and other frameworks are, each component is basically doing something different. For example, you could have a button component, which is basically performing an on-click event that could call an API, could change the state of something. You could have a card component, which is basically just rendering data. And at each of those component level, you can also be able to perform reactivity to that particular component alone. Now we have the props. This is basically just communication of data between two different components. In my opinion, um, generally we all know props is parent to child, but you might be wondering, okay, what happens when you want to pass communication between child to child? How does it work? Should I leave that to, uh, for someone to answer? Do you know how communication is being passed from child to child? Okay, someone wants to answer there. Yes, that's, that's just it. It's passed through a meeting of events. Now, I know it's something that a lot of engineers always run into. It's a problem. And it makes you, you would always want to make one particular component a parent just because you only understand props. But I want you to understand and know that components can communicate to each other, not minding who is a parent or who is a child. But the default behavior would always be from parents down to child. But in cases where you don't have that kind of scenario, you can always emit events between components. Now, we have the computed property. This is something I cherish a lot because it reduces the stress of your application. Not every data changes at every time. And that is why Vue.js has, Vue has what we call the computed properties because it is used to catch, when I mean catch, I mean like, you know, save temporarily data that does not need re-render or updates all the time. And that's one way to also save that process. Now, I mean, Vue.js is awesome. And I am someone, I'm a testimony of Vue.js because in my five to six years of engineering, I've built several applications using Vue. I've gotten the best contracts using Vue. I've worked in the best companies using Vue. I've built a lot of applications using Vue. And permit me to bring this in. I mean, it's my brag. I'm currently working on the biggest website generator application, and it's still running on Vue. I mean, what's, what's, what, what are you telling me now? <laughs> but I mean, that's just you know me preaching my gospel and making you understand that you can always do stuff with Vue. And I'm going to wrap it up because I'm someone that I don't just come here to tell you the beautiful side and leave you stranded. I want you to understand that no matter how beautiful a technology is or a framework, if it's not used well, you would not enjoy it. So be it React, be it Rails, be it Sales, whatever it is, if you don't know how to use it clearly and well, you're not going to enjoy it. So let's look at some performance considerations and optimization. Take this from me. See these three things? If you adhere to it, you would never have any issues building view applications. And first one is avoid unnecessary updates. Now, when I mean avoid unnecessary updates, I'm going to give you key points. Make sure you make use of computed properties more. And the reason I say so is because understand that not all data changes at every time. Example, if you want to populate a, a, a full name and data coming from your backend is a first name and a last name, all you need to do is just create a computed property that can append the full name, the first name, and the last name together and render it into the DOM. You don't need to create any function that now creates a different memory and all of that just because you want to make that particular update. Make sure you use V1. Now, in Vue.js, well, there's what we call the V1, that's V hyphen once, which is like one, and it's basically you used for rendering static content. So contents that you know it's not going to change, for example, normal contents in your websites that you know doesn't need any API call, you know in the next one month, two months, five months, that same content will remain the same. You can always use v ones to populate those kind of content. And make sure you use, for those of you that do V4, most, those of my junior engineers I used to work with, they stress me a lot. 
you will see someone looping through an array and it's not going to be passing a unique key for each list. Why will you do something like that? You are looping through an array, maybe you are rendering names of people from a database and you just render the names. You are not pointing each name to its own unique identifier. I mean, your unique identifier necessarily might not be an ID. It might be an introduced index in the client side. But let it be known and make sure that whatever you are using as a unique identifier is what unique. So which means if I'm using the word unique, it means I and someone else cannot have that same property or value, rather, not property, value. That's what it means. Now, introduce batch updates. Batch updates is not every changes that happens needs to render immediately. If you do that, it reduces the efficiency of your application. And how do you introduce batched updates in Vue? You can use the Vue.nest tick. If you're a Vue developer, the best friend you should have is your documentation. I want to disreact people a little. They have the worst documentation. But I think currently, currently they've improved, you know. But right from time, even if you just finished, even if you just finished JavaScript and you go pick view immediately, by next week, you're already building something very, you know, amazing. And that's because our documentation is on point. So make your documentation your friend. It has everything that you have. And lastly, introduce the use of watchers, but do not overuse it so that you don't have memory leakage and in issues with optimization and inefficiency. I mean, Vue is awesome. I, I don't know what else to tell you, but this is just me telling you, try something else. Don't be boxed up in you know, some stuff that doesn't really count. And yeah, I mean, if you want to reach out to me, you can reach out to me on Twitter, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn. And um, my own way of giving back to the community, I have a channel on YouTube. Um, I try my best to release at least one educational video a week added to my job. So it's something I do for free. And you can go there and take whatever it is. And I still help React folks too. I mean, I have a lot of videos that can help their engineering journey. And yeah, I think that's basically all about my talk. Thank you. <laughs> if you have questions. <laughs> yeah, show your questions. I won't answer them. <laughs> All of us are new cats. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for your talk. That was a lovely talk. Thank um, you, man. And I understood everything you said. So I just have one question. So just like um, in React land, we have three, well, pre version 19 in React, we have three watchers. So we have use memo, we have use callback, and we have use effect. So these are watcher hooks that we use to watch for state changes and um, do whatever that hook does. So they are watcher hooks. So do we have something similar in Vueland where um, a particular API to watch for any state change yeah, um, we have based on any dependency change or whatever. Yeah, we have yeah. we have something similar to that too. We have a memo for view three. For those of you that have started that have, that have migrated, I mean everybody should have migrated, but for those who are still using like previous versions, there is like a watcher watcher, which is like the keyword is watcher, but in view three, which is the new version, we have memo. Yeah. So just sorry, just I just wanted to get the exact um, of what it does. Okay, what it basically let me know the type of reactivity that happens in Vue compared to what happens. Okay, in so let me let me give an instance. Let's say you have a form data that has um, stuff like name, email, address, um, email, country, and the rest of that. So your view watcher can be able to watch for any of those properties or even all of those properties. And if for any reason you want to make a specific update when the country value changes. All you need to do is create a watcher that watches for form data dot country. And when that happens, whatever code you have inside now gets executed. And if your own case is basically the whole object, like you want when any change happens in the object, you can just pass in the form data. So our own watcher 
is not just for primitive data. It accepts string, boolean, array, whatever whatever it is your form data, your data type is. Yeah, he accepts that. Thank you. Yeah, so you made a, um, something about uh, the ID thing. When okay. we're talking about um, junior devs not being you see not, yeah. Yeah, I'm curious in that situation because I haven't used um, view okay. to that extent. So isn't there like a Linda thing for view or are those errors not quite around time and you know told and you are told or is it that, is it something that you have to know? Like I'm curious. Okay, so yeah, it's something that can be can be skipped. Skipped I mean is if you skip it during development, it's not gonna break your code, but you would always have those errors like on your browser console, like your particular property or loop data does not have an index. And the reason I pointed that out is because for cases where you need to make like maybe um, fetching data for a particular list, like maybe on click on the list, that's where I said it's very important to make sure each looped data or each looped value has a key unique identifier that is assigned to it. Okay, that's the same question I wanted to ask. Okay, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. All right, all right. Any other person? Okay, one more person, then we, um, we call it like. Not, uh, not necessarily a question. Okay, like okay. A rejoinder to, to what he said. So let's say you have um, paginated data from your API, re API request, and then um, you are rendering a list of users, and there is a button to block each user. So what happens is that if you don't add that index, you could, you could run into a situation where when you click the button for a user, it runs the action for a different user due to the reactivity in the DOM. So maybe you have deleted a user and then you now blocked another user. So the index keeps tracks. Yes, so it, it could be the index of the array right but when you are rendering data that um, you can do next on it that index because when you click next you know you re render a new list but the index is zero based based on the array so when you are clicking one you may be referring to the old thing in the do virtual DOM so that's why that index has to be unique across the whole data instead of um, the, yeah, thank you. Looks like this view is bringing a lot of questions. <laughs> I was not expecting it by me, let's go. Yeah, thank you very much for your session. Thank I, you. I really, uh, I really enjoyed every part of it. Thank you. I just have one question. Um, what's the TypeScript support for view? Okay, yes, for, okay, all right. Okay, so that's the last question, and I'm gonna answer that. So that question is said, what's the TypeScript support for Vue? Vue supports TypeScript for those who love TypeScript. You know, I've built Vue applications with TypeScript, and I still do. So if you want to, <laughs> don't mind Kelvin, doesn't use TypeScript. But if you want to, I mean, it's 100% um, you know, possible to bootstrap your view project with TypeScript. Okay, I won't be able to take more questions, but I mean, I'm still around. So if you have any other questions, you can come to the back and ask me. Thank you for listening to my talk. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Keep clapping till he leaves the stage. Thank you so much for that powerful um, um, talk.